For this guide, I'm going to, as briefly as possible, go over transferring your own personal music from your Windows machine to your iPhone. If you try to load up iTunes today, at least I get this error message. It's, it's maybe not an error, but it's like a notification, and it tells me that my music and TV shows are available in the Apple Music and Apple TV apps. You click OK, and it brings you to a lesser iTunes than we had before. Well, what does any of that even mean? There's no links or anything telling me where those apps are, and they are in the Windows Store. So I'm going to open up my Start menu, and I'm just going to type Store, and we should see Microsoft Store, not Windows Store, I guess. And click on it, and then open it up. And now there are two apps we're going to have to download before we can actually sync our music to our iPhone. So we need the Apple Music app, which we download from the Microsoft Store. And this is the app, so just download it, install it. And then we need the Apple Devices app. Sorry, just Apple Devices. And this will install for you. I've had an eternal update that won't go through. And as we can see, there's a two out of five star rating. So we kind of know what's in store for us. Yeah, let's try to get through it. Okay, next, before we open up Apple Music, you'll want to back up your iTunes library. I think you will find that by default under your music folder in this quick access menu, iTunes, iTunes Media, and here I think you'll have a music folder with all of your songs. So copy that folder maybe on your desktop somewhere, that'll make it a little bit easier in a second here. We're gonna close that for now, and then we're going to open up Apple Music. And the first time you open this up, it's going to ask you to sign into your iTunes account. And you'll notice this looks eerily similar to iTunes, because it basically is iTunes, but for some reason they don't let you sync to your iPhone in Apple Music. We need the Apple Devices app for that, but more on that in a second. Now we need to pretty much recreate our entire music library in the, music, in the Apple Music app, and... That's kind of annoying because this, uh, this library is going to completely replace the iTunes library that we had on our iPhone. The two will not talk to each other, they will not merge together, one will replace the other. Luckily, we can re-download all of our songs in Apple Music no problem, so if you only have all of your music bought on iTunes and you don't have any external music, that's pretty easy. Just re-download everything, resync it, which we'll get to in a second, and you're good to go. But if you're like me and you have some ripped CDs or music from other legal, of course, sources, then what you're going to want to do is tell Apple Music to look for those songs. Up here at the top left, next to the Apple Music title, there's three dots. If we click on those, we can go to the library dropdown, and here we can add a folder or individual files to our library. And here we can just browse through our computer and get to them no problem. Now, remember that folder, that imaginary folder that I copied from iTunes onto my desktop? Well, if we open up File Explorer again, go back to Music, if you've loaded the Apple Music app, you should now have an Apple Music folder. So under Apple Music, and then Media, and then Music, here we can put all of our songs in a more permanent location. So, small side note, when I was transferring some of my music to Apple Music, I was realizing it wasn't showing up. So here I have a couple of songs from Bach, they're all in FLAC. And if I just search for this album name, which is Muse Open, uh, open, and if I drag this in here, we'll see nothing pops up. If I come to Songs and then I search for Muse Open, drag it over here, nothing pops up. Now, anyone who has been dealing with iTunes for a while probably knows FLAC is not supported on Apple devices. We have to convert it to ALAC. Uh, I decided to use a program called Media Human for this, and there's a million different programs that serve this purpose for you out there. There's no reason to use Media Human, you can use whatever you want, but this one was the first one I found that was free, so that's why I'm using it. And we're going to drag our music files into here. And there's a little drop down, we're going to select ALAC, click on Close, and then we're going to click Start Conversion. This goes pretty quick, and then by default, this program is going to drop my converted files into my music folder into a folder named Converted by Media Human, and here they are. But this is not my permanent music folder location, so I'm going to copy these and navigate to my NAS and move them into my permanent location. 
and this is where they're actually going to live. So this is the folder, this permanent folder is what I want to point my Apple Music app to. I hope that makes sense. So now if I drag these songs into Apple Music, they will show up because they are in M4A or ALAC format, which Apple Music and your iPhone, of course, will support and they will play. Another step I'm going to do is just select all my music in the same album. And I can do that with Control A or Shift click. And then I'm going to right click them and go to Properties. And I'm going to make sure that album as a compilation is checked. This will put all my songs under the same album because iTunes and Apple Music, in my experience, love to make individual albums for individual songs, especially if you have different artist names, which makes sense. And that checkbox is just telling Apple Music that, hey, all these songs, I want them to be in the same album. Okay, I could make a whole long video on how you can organize your music library. I'm assuming, for the most part, people already know how to do that. How do we actually put the songs on the iPhone, though? So we're going to now open up the Apple Devices app. Now that we're ready to move our Apple Music library to our phone. And then, you can't see this part, but I'm going to plug my iPhone into my computer. And I'm also going to unlock my iPhone. And then a pretty familiar menu is going to pop up. If you've used iTunes before, these are going to be options that you've seen before. But now, for some reason, they are in two separate apps instead of conveniently being in the same app like they have been for 15 years. Uh, one thing I do want to uncheck is automatically sync when this iPhone is connected because I only want it to sync when I tell it to sync. And then we're also going to make a backup because we are about to mess up a bunch of data on our phone. So just back up your iPhone, be safe. And then we can navigate to the music menu on the left side here. And we want to sync music onto our iPhone and we want to sync the entire library. It doesn't matter which of these two options you choose, your Apple Music library is going to completely replace your old i2 library. And once we are ready to sync, we can click on sync, and then we're going to click on skip backup, which sometimes doesn't work. And your iPhone may ask you for your PIN, so you know that it can trust this computer. And we'll see if it actually skips the backup today. It actually skipped it, and then it's going to wait for the changes to be applied, and there we go, it copied over my buck. And now I'm going to double check on my iPhone, you can't see it, but I can, and my music has successfully been placed onto my iPhone. So as I said earlier, the iTunes app on Windows has not been very good for a really long time. I'm not against Apple wanting to completely get rid of it and replace it with the new modern apps. But because these apps are so new, they are pretty glitchy. This one in particular, Apple Devices, oh my goodness, you're going to have so much fun dealing with this app. If you plug in your phone and nothing happens, what you should do is close all the Apple apps, hit Control-Alt-Delete to open up your task manager, and at the top here, type in Apple and kill any process that has Apple or AMP device agent, and then reload the apps, and that worked for me. If that doesn't work, restart your computer, turn your phone on and off, and plug it in again, and reinstall the apps, and if none of that works, contact Apple support, and good luck. Anyway, I thought this process was a little more complicated than it needed to be. Hopefully this helped out somebody, and once you do get everything working, it's not too bad. I just wish there was a little more knowledge given to us from iTunes that Apple wants us to do it this way and no longer use iTunes. Thanks for watching.